Hello everyone, it is me Mr. Fossil and I am back here with another video. Today's video is going to be a bit different. For today I am going to give you guys a bit of a biology lesson. Today we are going to do a review on the external anatomy of the sea star. For this lesson we are going to be using a specimen of the knobby starfish. It is a dried out sea star, and it gets its name because of an obvious trait it has. It has bumps all over its body. But yeah, that's quite obvious. Sea stars in general belong to a group of marine invertebrates known as the echinoderms. This phylum also includes animals such as the flat sea urchin, aka your sand dollar, and crinoids, which I have a fossilized specimen here. These guys are living fossils, and they still exist today in the deep depths of the ocean. Crinoids may look like flowers, but they're actually an animal. Echinoderms, in general, all live in the ocean, and they all lack a brain. One thing that is unique about echinoderms is their symmetry. They have something known as pentaradial symmetry, which means their bodies are divided up into five parts. This is seen very obviously with our knobby starfish. One, two, three, four, five. Five parts. For comparison, we have our flat sea urchin. One, two, three, four, five five parts. So now that we have that out of the way, let's have a much closer look at the knobby starfish's external anatomy. The knobby starfish, like most sea stars, follow the common body plan of five arms, giving them the name starfish. But these arms also have another name. They are also known as rays. The rays are connected to this structure here, which is the main body, or the central disc. At the tips of the starfish's arms would have been a very interesting and unique feature. The starfish had eye spots. These eye spots don't work, I believe, like our eyes. But they would have been able, I believe, to detect light, darkness, help it seek out prey, and probably shadows. I'm not too sure, but I know that they didn't work like our eyes. A pretty interesting fact, eh? Who knew that starfish had eyes? At the top of the central disc, you can see a little pinhole here. This is the, is the starfish's anus, or butt. If you look very closely here, this circular structure here on the, on the starfish's body, this is known as the madreporite. This um, organ is used to suck in water into its internal body, powering its feet to move. Basically, the starfish has a built-in hydraulic system. This, combined with its organs, helps the starfish's feet move and helps it move across the seafloor. I gotta say that that is a brilliant part on nature's end. A very interesting feature. For most of the time, I thought that this little pinhole was the madreporite, so please do not confuse that with the anus. This feature, the dot there, the dot here, is the madreporite, not the little dot here. That is the anus, that is the madreporite. Anus is where waste comes out of, madreporite is where water is sucked in to help power the starfish's hydraulic system. Please do not make this mistake like I did. The two arms that are closest to the madreporite are known as the bivium, and the three arms that are farthest away from the madreporite are known as the trivium. So now that we're done with the top portion of the anatomy, let's look underneath. 
This, my friends, is the underside of the sea star. Let's have a look. This star-shaped feature here is the starfish's mouth. In life, starfish are carnivorous, and one group of animals that they prey on are bivalves. This group of mollusks contains animals such as clams, oysters, cockles, and mussels. Starfish have many tubed feet, which they don't just use for walking, but they also use them to help pry open the shelves of mollusks. Starfish have a very unique way of eating. When prey is captured, their stomach regurgitates outside of their mouth and wraps around their prey, digesting it from the inside out. What a way to go out. But like I said before, the starfish has tube feet, many tube feet, which aren't really visible in this specimen because it's dried out. But these would have been used to help it seduce prey and walk about on the seafloor, and was powered by the madreporite and its hydraulic system. One feature that's definitely not visible here is that in between the rows of its tube feet, is a structure known as the ambulacral ridge. This is obviously not visible, like I said, because it's dried out, but it does have the structure. You would have been able to see it when it was freshly dead. But that, my friends, is the basic external anatomy of a sea star. Specifically, this is the knobby starfish, but all sea stars have this you know, ana an anatomical features. I am sorry that, you know, I couldn't open this one up to show you the internal organs, but I don't think that would be too appropriate. And also because this is dried out. I didn't really want to make a mess either. But yeah, I hope you guys learned something new from this video. You know, let me know what, what you thought in the comments below. And I hope you all enjoyed. Please stay tuned for more content and have a nice day. Stay safe and well. Bye.